Well, you know, you, you sometimes you have one of those a year where just you're kind of walking around in mud in the first half. Our energy level was not very good, and um, credit to San Jose and Coach Miles. They were ready to go, and um, we found a way down 13, um, cut down that lead, get stops and rebounds, and make free throws when we needed to. Um, so uh, credit to... Viola, credit to McClendon, uh, Aduje, they played a great game. It was hard in the first half. They were playing five guards. We kind of had to switch everything, keep it in front. It was way more of a traditional game in the second half. Um, and uh, obviously a, a good result. So uh, appreciative of the fans and um, grateful for the win. Uh, two, two for you. Uh, you mentioned you know, playing mud. You mentioned them playing five guards. Was the defensive problem in the first half more of an energy thing more of a schematic I think it was a little bit of both um, I think we were fearful of giving up the three we were over helping a little bit you know it felt like almost like those guarantee games when you play those really small teams and we were not prepared for that you know they had foul trouble and they went to that um, and so they were spreading us out we were over helping we weren't real comfortable um, you know, and uh, they obviously built a lead and then uh, a little bit more, like I said, of a more traditional game in the second half that we were more comfortable with. Um, Donnie, way better in the second half. I thought the first half way too consumed with getting fouled, refs or whatever. And, um, you know, his effort, his energy uh, was way better in the second half. Uh, obviously, CJ had the thumb injury not related to anything but basketball. And um, they, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of people asking. Um, the... Uh, the Braden Applehans into the starting lineup thing. Um, he's been playing well. Maybe it's a sample size issue, but the starting lineup tonight was minus 12 in eight, over eight minutes of play. Um, they got outscored by quite a bit when they were playing together. Was that something that, that Braden is doing differently than CJ, or was that just a small sample size? You're not going to think too much about it. No, I mean, I think he was missing shots, but I, the, the, the plus minus was bad all around in the first half because they were out playing us. So. I don't think it was Braden. Um, I think it was collectively everybody. Uh, I also think Philip was really good. Um, came off the bench and uh, played with phenomenal energy, toughness, getting more comfortable in the lane. I think that was obviously an issue early. Uh, had that dunk and was driving it. Um, and so that's why you need a bench. And, um, you know, Philip certainly stepped up. And, you know, Braden made a big three. I got him out. Um, we were really tired there. I know we big three and the building was going nuts, but we were exhausted and uh, had to get a defensive lineup in, but Braden was fine. I don't, I don't think the plus minus was all him. Largest comeback during your time here. What do you feel like your team showed you specifically in gutting out that win at the end? Well, disappointed in the first half to give them that lead. Um, but there was some resolve there in the second half, um, whether it was Donovan making a big shot in the short corner, Nelly making big free throws, uh, True even getting that rebound, but then turning it over. Mustafa getting a big rebound. Um, and then obviously missing the two free throws at the end and then getting the rebound. Uh, you know, so, I mean, they just found a, they found a way to win. Um, but I think we all know, like, for one, when people come into this building, it's a big deal to everybody, as it should be. It's an honor to play in this building. Um, but we need to have way more energy defensively than we did at the beginning of that game. Now, it was way better in the last five minutes of the game. Yeah, can you just talk a little bit more of that? It seemed like they were very calm. I mean, what does that say about this team? Calm, cool, and collected to get that win down the stretch, you know? Yeah, I mean, you got to rely on the older guys. Nelly, this is his fifth year, I think, in college basketball, makes big free throws. Um, you know, Mustafa, 19 points again. Like, Mustafa's quietly playing very, very good basketball. Um, you know, Donovan does some big things. So, um, weird playing a league game this early. Um Nobody is where they want to be right now. Um, we've had a lot of travel, so it's nice to be home. We'll be home all month. Um, so, yeah, just needed to needed to have a great um, level of resolve to go get a win when we just were not, it just was not going our way. And a lot of that had to do with San Jose. For sure. Then I just got to ask you, uh, your vantage point of the, the Donnie shot. I mean, it, he always does something crazy every year. Too. But that was a, a great shot. How big was that? Yeah, he, he was tired. Obviously, I'm playing him a lot of minutes. And um, I am using him a lot in a lot of ball screens, and it's wearing him down. I probably got to give him a little bit more of a rest at times. Uh, but he's a great player, um, was 
way better in the second half than he was in the first half. And uh, that's what you need sometimes. You need a guy to go get a bucket. Uh, what, what lesson can you show from that film on Donnie after that mess layup came back and got that steal right after? Yeah, I mean, I was screaming, go make a play, go, you know, because sometimes you give up on it, but they didn't give up on that play. Made a big, big, uh, big block, steal, whatever you wanted to call it, because um, they were starting to push it a little bit more. They're a slow tempo team, um, but we were not getting back and getting set, so we made obviously a great energy play there. It, that was one of your three point you know, buckets. Uh, you had six total points off tri- uh, turnovers. Um, again, sort of like uh, maybe the beginning of the Arizona State game. Uh, were they doing something that was just really making it hard for you guys to turn them over? Yeah, they, they had the ball in the five man's hand a lot, right? So um, it was not in the guards' hands as much. Uh, so we were not able to disrupt as much as we could. I didn't like our defensive plan. That's on us as a coaching staff. Um, we we really revved it up with our pressure. Um, so I think a lot of that had to do with he was like a point forward out there. He's, he's a really good player. Once he gets in um, great shape, he, he's a kind of a problem. He killed us two years ago as well. And then the, you guys aren't the only team that was heavily favored and, and really got to run for their money at home tonight. Um, in the league, Utah State did too. Is, is this a game that you're just – I mean, you, you're going to watch the film, I imagine. You, you don't, you're not really one to not watch film, but – just kind of chalk this up to that's one of those games. I mean, it's the first one. But. No, I mean it's 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 too early. I think I think we're just we have to get better. You know, um, we have to. And you're down a starter, right? Um, and maybe the rhythm was screwed up a little bit there. I don't know. Um, we got to hold ourselves to a championship standard in that first half. I don't think we did that. So. I kind of treat every game. It really doesn't matter. It's the same. I mean, we shouldn't be tired. We're back. We're ready to go. Um, you know, so more than anything, um, we'll kind of break down the film like we do all the games and uh, hold them accountable the best we can while getting rest for Saturday night. Coach, the crowd was alive tonight as you secured your first conference win of the season. What do you think is the significance of that energy and support from the fans? Um, well, you know, I was talking to our new AD, Fernando Lovo, after the game, just about how special it is. It, it really is. Um, they got us going in that second half. They get a little anxious at times, right? It calm everybody down a little bit because everybody wants to win so badly. But um, some of the best fans in college basketball that uh, I don't think everybody knows about. And um, every time I walk down that ramp, I am very, very grateful. I was just going to ask you about your interactions with the new AD today. Did you get to catch up with him at all before this game? We, we've, um, through the process, before he got hired, we spoke towards the end um, and uh, was really, really impressed. We have some common friends and people that we know in the profession that uh, absolutely raved about him. Um, you know, and obviously now he's coming in, his head is spinning, he's meeting a million people and he's trying to hit the ground running. He's trying to, you know, he's got um, two little kids and he's trying to kind of figure it out, you know, so you don't want to wear him down too much. But, um, you know, I, I think he understands the fans and how passionate they are about all the sports. He understands what Lobo Athletics and the university means to this community. And uh, I think he wants to dive two feet in. And um, very, very grateful, and I haven't said this publicly, but for what Dave Williams has done, um, he will be an AD, if not soon, uh, very, very soon. And um, he held it together through the transition. But even more than that, Eddie really empowered him with us and uh, in the three years that I was here, and uh, he was phenomenal uh, as well. So very grateful for all that Dave gave us and uh, extremely excited about what Fernando's going to bring to the table. Um, Coach, obviously you haven't really looked into the film in New Mexico State, but obviously kind of tying into what the crowd means and what it means to have a game like this and a rivalry and it only happened once a year. What do you think it's going to take to bounce back from this game in terms of the the first half and be able to carry it over to a game like New Mexico State on Saturday? Yeah, just 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 learn. You know, I mean, get some rest today. Get back with a you know a humble uh, approach to the film. Look yourself in the mirror and figure out what we did well, what we didn't do well, uh, and get back to work. You know, all of our days are they're pretty similar. You know, I, I try to be very very consistent with my approach. Um, doesn't matter if it's a rivalry game or a league game. 
they're really all the same to me. Now I understand how important it is to our fans, and it's unique now that you're playing once versus twice. I I I, I like it. Uh, it was not my choice. Nobody can blame me, but uh, I, I think it'll I think it'll in, increase the intensity because you're only playing once. So uh, we know how important it is to both fan bases. I would say the defensive side was bad for us. Effort was bad. Uh, we couldn't stay in front of them one on one. We had to help too much. They had some wide open threes. It was just the play. It wasn't the play we we uh, or the, it wasn't the way we were supposed to play. So was when you say it's not the way you're supposed to play, is that just an energy thing, or were you guys actually not doing maybe what the scouting report or the game plan said you should be doing? Were you guys actually doing things wrong, or just not with the energy and effort? I would say both. You know, sometimes we change the scout uh, in the middle of the games. You know, to adjust, and then it's just effort. You know, we're supposed to pick up the ball. You know, put pressure on you, make them uncomfortable. And uh, that's the way we create turnovers. So I was just talking about um, being able to finish out that game, staying calm. What does that say about this team? Uh, it's, you know, I feel like it's a game we're supposed to win. And uh, everybody knew that in our locker room. Um, everybody uh, played the right way at the end. Uh, we took control of the game, you know, control of the pace of the game. Uh, I, think, I think it's a good sign. What is this win? I mean, battling out early conference game, obviously, just a battle of adversity. It's got to help you move forward, too. Yeah, definitely. We're playing for the championship, so uh, that's the goal. What do you think the biggest challenge their style of play presented for you guys? I would say they play they play four guards, kind of, and uh, they play a lot of isolation, uh, a lot of uh, kind of, we call it flow, where they have four out, something like five out. Uh, it affected our help side sometimes, so they had some easy buckets that way. Towards the end of the game, what was the message in the huddle to be able to go out and, and close it out the way that you did? Coach said that if you don't play hard, I'm not going to uh, play you, so that was pretty peculiar. Uh, talk to us about your rebounding effort. You guys out-rebounded them by about 11 rebounds. You led the team with five offensive rebounds. So talk to us about your mentality about crashing the boards and giving your guys effort other guys extra possessions yeah just trying to get extra possessions we was the bigger team this time so uh we knew that what we got to do we got to go hard on the rebounds there's no way they can stop us if we keep going and what were some of the differences towards the end of the game for you guys whether it's effort or execution or game plan that helped you guys overcome a late deficit you guys were down by about eight or nine points for a couple minutes of, about eight minutes left in the game yeah what are some of the things that you guys did to, uh, help me take the lead I would say we executed in defense and offense. Uh, we played better one-on-one defense. Uh, they, it was really hard for them to score. And on offense, we, we got some easy buckets that way. Uh, Mustafa, can you talk about just the message that CJ was able to give you guys even though he was off the bench with an injury? Yeah, uh, he's one of the captains on the team. Uh, older guys, he, he, he's a significant piece of the team. And I told him that if he can help us, even though he's not playing, uh, it would be great, and he, he did just that. Just from your vantage point, can you talk about that Donovan Dent fadeaway fall jumper? <laughs> yeah, that was tough, I ain't gonna lie. He, he does it sometimes in practice too, but yeah, I don't know. When Donnie got the ball, anything can happen. <laughs> yeah, well, to follow up on that, because we had fun with Braden's dunk against USC and this you know, fadeaway by Donnie. When you guys watch game film, what's Donnie gonna tell all you guys about that? No. Probably I do that. <laughs> we'll talk about it. Though, yeah, we? yeah. All right, Don, Donnie was a guy that I, I, again, I think a lot of you guys started slow in the first half, but he ends up with, I think it was, what, 20 and 5? Yeah, 20 and 5, and he drew eight fouls. Um, when he got it going in the second half there, it looked like he was the guy that was sort of answering every bucket, and then you kind of took over for him for a little bit. Um, when you see Donnie start to take over moments like that, he, he did it against Arizona State for a while, too. Um, what, what are you guys thinking about when, when Donnie's kind of in that zone a little bit about tackling the rim? Um, I would say space the floor because they got to stop the ball and be ready to shoot the ball. You also scored your 1,000th career point uh, last game. So just talk about your feelings of being able to accomplish that great milestone. Yeah, it, it was the last game. It was I think, against Texas Southern. But um, I don't know. It's just a big part of the journey. You know, I've been in college for this is about to be my fourth and half year. Uh, I'm blessed, you know, thankful for everybody who's been part of this journey and I don't know, just keep working hard.